So The Sopranos is widely regarded to be one of, if not the greatest television series ever made. The show, which ran from 1999 to 2007, has amassed millions of fans, won 21 Primetime Emmy Awards, and currently holds a 9.2 out of 10 on IMDb. And as I've stated many times, anything this successful will get a video game adaptation, so introducing The Sopranos, Road to Respect. Released in 2006 and sporting a particularly cursed cover, Road to Respect, on paper, seemed like it had the potential to be a genuinely great game. I mean, it had the actual cast voicing their characters, and one of the best TV shows of all time to take inspiration from. But, as is the case with many licensed video games, it didn't work out like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So anyway, without further ado, let's find out just how bad this game actually is. So the story follows Joey LaRocca, the illegitimate son of Big Pussy Bump and Saro, making his way up the ranks of the mob in hope of one day becoming a made man. Now, if you don't recognise that character, this is because Joey and the story are entirely original, having zero connection to the show's canon storyline. Which, interestingly enough, was a request from David Chase himself. He insisted that Road to Respect had little to no connection to the show, which kind of shows how keen he was to make it in the first place. And this brings me to the first issue, that being that the game relies far too much on its license. It never even fucking bothers to make any of its original characters the slightest bit likeable. I get it, people would rather see Tony and Silvio, but making no effort, at all, is incredibly lazy. Even the main character is essentially just gangster asset number one, and a good rule of thumb here is if they aren't canon, then they will have the personality of a fucking brick. Anyway, the story is this. One night while dealing with the troublemaker at the Bada Bing, you accidentally introduce him to the urinal too hard and he dies. Maran, you killed him! You stupid shit! You and your mate are then tasked with getting rid of the body, However, before you can, your mate takes his expensive watch as a souvenir. It's then revealed a few missions later that the guy you killed was the nephew of Philadelphia crime boss Angelo Buschetta, and since your mate's been seen wearing his watch, everyone now thinks it was him. So you then have to whack anyone who knows, including your best friend, eventually leading to a showdown against Buschetta himself. Then, at the end, you press X to get made, and the game ends. Now, honestly, it sounds like a fairly decent story. And it would be, if it was even addressed to begin with. See, despite this being the game's most engaging plot, how many missions are actually dedicated to it? Five? Six? Seven? <coughs> two. Two missions out of 20. Sure, it's mentioned in others, but you spend less than 20 minutes actually dealing with the repercussions. Also, the mission where you whack your friend, essentially solving the problem, is mission seven, with it only being brought up again 10 missions later. So you may wonder, what do you do in between if it's not dealing with the murder? Well, you help AJ with a rave. Tony's SUV gets stolen by drug dealers, and every mission until the end is directly driven by that. In fact, Angelo doesn't even know you killed his nephew until you tell him to his face in the final mission. Better than your nephew did. When I dumped him off the pier, you cunt. You kill my favorite nephew! You picked the wrong house, fool! And the only reason he hated you was because you burned down his porn studio under Tony's orders. Now, I'm aware the murder is a plot device to get the story rolling, but why include something this big when you're just going to undermine it with something which, by comparison, is about as engaging as watching TV static for three hours? I should also mention there's a bunch of side missions with the cast, and it's quite cool to see them, especially with the stellar voice acting. Steroids, cocksucker. When you're jerking off in your TV room, which hand you use? Although saying that, it's still not enough to save this game, because it appears to be having an identity crisis and can't decide if it wants to be a story-driven gangster game or The Sopranos experience. The parts without them feel like an off-brand heavily watered-down GTA clone, and the parts with them feel like they only exist to reinforce the fact that, hey, this is a Sopranos game. Almost nothing feels connected, and honestly, most of the parts with the crew could just be in any order with little effect on the plot. However, there is actually something really interesting about the story, that being it's interactive. Pretty often you'll be greeted with a tough, neutral or smooth approach to dialogue, and these choices do absolutely nothing. The game's story is linear, 
meaning it has to be followed regardless of what you say, and it makes no difference. I'm throwing a rave with my buddy next weekend. 30 bucks to get in, cash bar, it's gonna be huge. I want you to work security. No way. Hey, one night, 400 bucks. Are you crazy? Your dad will have a fuck fit if he finds out. I'm 500, that's my final offer. Remember, this is just between us. No problem. Also, it's just full of plot holes. The main one being that the guy you killed at the Bada Bing was there to see Tony about a drug deal. I mean, he states later on he wasn't interested anyway, but had the guy said who his uncle was any time before he was having his fucking head caved in, he would have been fine. It's actually revealed in the next mission that the guy was just knocked out. So you have to shoot him at the docks while he begs for his life, meaning he can speak. The game wants you to think that Joey and Paulie were being unreasonable, when in reality, the guy was withholding life-saving information for no obvious reason. Oh, and finally, this game has a criminally short playtime. I casually beat it in just over three hours, but HowLongToBeat.com says it takes five. Maybe it's because I wasn't exploring the various locations, but even then, I can't see how there's two hours worth of stuff to do. So aside from the sections with Tony and the crew, the entirety of the gameplay can be summarised like this. Go to a place, attack everything that breathes so you can speak to one guy and leave. Then rinse and repeat for the next three hours. Honestly, it reminds me far too much of Kick-Ass 2, essentially because it is Kick-Ass 2, just with the Sopranos. Cabagool. Anyway, the gameplay is your standard, unresponsive, utterly horrendous 3D brawler. I've only started. You have a light attack, a heavy attack, weapons you can pick up, and the ability to grab enemies on low health, allowing for special moves and environmental kills. Oh. Oh. However, despite all this, the only viable method of combat is the quicker light attack or melee weapons. Preferably melee weapons because for one, they do far more damage, but more importantly, they'll stop an infuriating issue. See, you can't block or counter in this game, and you're fighting enemies with the same combat mechanics as you, i.e. they can grab. However, the difference is, they aren't limited by the player's health, meaning they can do it whenever they fucking feel like it, which, surprise, surprise, is all the time. And you're often fighting multiple people simultaneously without the ability to block. And this means one thing, an endless stream of fucking stun locks. You ain't got a fucking chance. It is relentless, and it makes combat an absolute nightmare. Holding a weapon is the only way to stop this, as it results in a much easier quick time event, and as an added benefit, you can end fights quicker. Something you'll want to do, because the combat is soul-crushingly boring. Now you might be wondering, aren't you missing something? You know that thing that was used to whack people in the show? Well, you're right, I am. Because it's hardly worth mentioning. You see, after level 2, you do get access to a gun, but actually using it, well, that's an entirely different story. See, ammo is very, very scarce, and some enemies take an entire clip to kill. Also, I want to mention that firearms are directly tied to the respect system. This means that shooting people will bring heat, in turn dropping your respect, and if it's too low, you'll get whacked. In addition to this, killing someone in public is an instant game over. However, picking up money from dead foes means you can pay poorly to keep your respect high, and as a result, you can use the gun. This, in theory, sounds really cool. In theory. Because I ended the game with over $10,000, never paid poorly a fucking thing, and my respect was at 97% the entire game, even after shooting three guys in public. Funnily enough, the only time it dropped was during the final mission after shooting some rival gangsters in the heart of a cargo ship which last time I checked, is much more secluded than the open reception at a gym. On top of this, the game's approach to what brings heat and what doesn't is just so wonky it's laughable. It's a 3D brawler, so you expect fights, but anyone who does so much as exist near Joey LaRocca is destined to suffer his wrath. And I'm not just talking about other mobsters or people in debt, I'm talking about minimum wage juice bar workers, pharmacy technicians, lawyers, the janitor who gets a bit lippy so you make him eat a table saw, 
The game genuinely makes an excuse for you to fight everything that breathes, yet this isn't suspicious. Using a gun is. I mean, there's another mission where you have to kill another mobster in a hospital. He's in surgery, so what do you do? Well, you go to his observation room, beat up four guys who come for you, go to his hospital room afterwards, stab his guard in the eye with a syringe, then very loudly break his life support machine, all while in view of the fucking reception. Now, I'm not an expert, but I have the slightest suspicion that would bring just as much heat as using a gun. And every single mission is like this. Now, finally, I want to mention the glitches. People freezing in place, running in the background of cutscenes, freezing while they shoot is all stuff I witnessed in my first playthrough. <laughs> So the game isn't all bad, as mentioned the voice acting is pretty damn good, with everyone delivering a solid performance, and it is cool to see them all, especially James Gandolfini as Tony Soprano. And while definitely not intentional, the ridiculous story can provide some very entertaining so bad it's good moments. These include attacking the owner of a gym with a katana, fighting a porn star with a dildo, having a 2v2 with Vito while you're all using boom mics, and fighting a pharmacist who's drugged you, but for some reason his hallucinations have physical presence. Also, an honourable mention to the final showdown with Angelo, because it's a battle with a mob boss that lets you fight with fire extinguishers, a six pack of beer, fishing rods, and a fucking AC unit. Overall, this game is pretty awful. Is it the worst game ever? No, not by a long shot, but it's by no means good. I admit I probably got bored a lot quicker because I'm not an avid fan, but even then, by the time you've beaten up your 15th drunk in the Bada Bing, you'll be more than done with it. This game's one and only saving grace is its characters, and by that I mean the ones from the show, not fucking Joey LaRocca. Although the issue is, while you may see them a lot, the only people you'll actually be fighting are the same faceless goons over and over until you literally die of boredom. I did read online that David Chase had almost nothing to do with this game, only overseeing the script because he wanted to make sure that the characters were true to the characters. And apparently he didn't even want to make a video game, with HBO being the ones to greenlight the project. And at the end of the day, this seems to have suffered the same fate as many licensed video games, thrown together with little care and expecting everyone to love it because it's The Sopranos. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.